the first work one meets coming into the exhibition is Super Ego, which is a reproduction of Scotland Yard's revolving sign. It gets to the heart of, of, of what that thing denotes, but, it, but I hope it has a kind of almost like a mythical quality, or, or it, because those reflective surfaces, we can't see ourselves in it, it suggests that it has this incredible reach. I got some stretches made up that were my span in width, and which is the same as one's height, and then double height. So I was starting to use my fingers, and then I kind of made a kind of breakthrough painting which was just hand printed, and I just flipped the canvas over and repeated. So, so it's pretty symmetrical worked, and then I started smearing the, the silvers further and further. That led to the paintings here, which I call mirror paintings. And then the penny dropped really, you know, I realized that I kind of created uh, a little arena for expression and that kind of euphoric light you get as you're just going up, up, up above the cloud line in, in, in an aircraft and that, that, that quality of light. The, the mirror is, or was the, the intervention I made in Freud's study in London when he and his family fled from Vienna in 38. They, they settled in this big Edwardian house in, in London and by reflecting the entire room, that flips the space, and dub, doubles the volume. It interested me to see what would happen if I took that mirrored ceiling and brought it here and it's hung at the same height as it was the ceiling height of, of his study. But of course it reflects just what we have here and so it kind of it frames the loss of all those things. There's a famous picture that Freud's son-in-law Max Halberstadt took of him in 1921 and I realized there were actually two you know you only need a little disjuncture between the two viewpoints you can achieve a stereoscopic 3D image and so it, it I think our sense of ourselves as and, and, our, and the mystery of consciousness and everything else is largely about this bizarre thing that having two eyes gives us space perception. The piece writ in water is a kind of model maquette that I made to achieving this public project. The central to the whole building was this notion of having Clause 39 of Magna Carta at Runnymede inscribed upside down and back to front so that you read it in the reflection of the water. It suggests something fragile, transient, uh, elusive, but actually central and important, yeah. I suppose the mirrors in all these things are very voracious of the world. They eat up every detail and send it back, reverse or upside down, inside out. But in a sense, they're just empty photons. And I suppose they're quite unsettling in that regard.